Over the past three days, high school students in the corporate area, predominantly males, have been embroiled in a series of violent altercations. The escalating violence has heightened concerns over student safety in schools and on the streets. As tensions rise, so too do the anxieties of other students and stakeholders. Celine Campbell reports. From the classrooms involving teachers and now to the streets, high school students, particularly males, have engaged in an ongoing three-day brawl early similar to incidents last year. The incidents reportedly started over a female student on Monday in the Halfway Tree Transport Center. The videos making rounds on social media feature students from prominent high schools to include Kingston College, Calabar, Queens, Campion College, and Mona High. Board of Chairman for Calabar High, Reverend Carl Henlin, says the violence among students is sadly a reflection of how society deals with conflicts. So what we have seen over these days is unacceptable and regretful, but we should not be surprised because the nature of the society in which we live is one in which violence seems to be the order of the day. In the latest fight said to have taken place on Wednesday, a male student had sustained injuries to his side, seemingly not life-threatening. President of the Jamaica Teachers Association, Leighton Johnson, says he's unaware of any further injuries sustained by students. He's, however, condemning the brawl and joins Henlin's call for better conflict resolution. We have become a really violent society. And of course, uh, students or children live what they learn. This is what um, they see in our society on a daily basis. Um, as a nation, we have resorted to violence in, or violent means in really dealing with our conflicts or, or issues. You know, and this is something that as a nation, we have to you know, come together to speak with one voice in eradicating. Meanwhile, the Mona High School has closed for the rest of the week following the series of fights. CVM News understands that some students are faring for their own safety simply because of their association with a particular school. Meanwhile, calls for stronger intervention from members of the Jamaica Constabulary Force, JCF, and the society at large are intensifying. All of us have a right to, to mold our young people because we ought to be dreadfully frightened of what is ahead of us if our children at this stage are responding in the way that they are doing. So we would want our state agencies, the police officers, as best as possible to be patrolling these, these areas, the bus areas, the bus stops, the areas where students uh, congregate to get transportation to and from school, you know, have and maintain a presence in these spaces. The Ministry of Education has since intervened and is currently in dialogue with principals from the affected schools. So allow me to update that story because the 15-year-old boy is now deceased. Yeah, sad to say, sad to be the bearer of bad news, but I don't know what I have to do with the job. Not sure, because follow and subscribe to the channel, yeah, automatically I give me a job. St. James schoolboy fatally stabbed by a schoolmate. Hmm. The St. James police are investigating the stabbing death of 15 year old Raniel Plummer, reportedly by his 14 year old schoolmate in Granville, St. James, on Thursday. The boy was STABB ED outside their Irwin High School gate. Report from the Montego Bay police are that Raniel and another student, I almost say another man, because a man activity them about anyway that student had an altercation at school about 3 p.m ranil was approached by the said student along with a group of boys who reportedly mm -hmm. attacked him during the altercation a knife was used to stab the 15 year old boy in the chest in a widely circulated voice note after the stabbing incident on Thursday, a woman identifying herself as Rani's mom appealed for prayers for her injured son. He was assisted to the hospital where he died while being treated. Now, this, all of this is over a, a female. All of this are over female student.
yes yeah, so this little boy lost his life over a female student oh back in the days going to school me and girl in love a matter of fact me in love with girl and girl i know because me never saw ball if you walk up to the girl and tell the girl so look here baby roses are red and violets are blue sugar is sweet but guess what i love you me never saw ball for that so me used to vex when time me see any boy to talk to that the girl eh? remember saying oh, i saw we deal with it over here jamaica youtube tv i talked to no when i go come Given the things them are not put for two cent on it, yeah, man. And given us some example of things that happen in our life, same way, yeah. Because, yeah, man, me and girl in love, me love the girl, gone to bed, me no want to see no boy. So I that the girl, eh? and guess what? It will have my friend them know, say, me in love with the girl, and me and the girl, they in a relationship. The only person to know about the relationship is the girl herself. You understand? Because we, not, we never saw ball. And me know say, I know me alone. Yeah, you used to do this. I feel the way about a girl when we got at school. How are you? A fresh and blood run through we. At a way straight like arrow. Yeah. But, boy, this is a next level. This is a next level where a man I go attack I'm sorry a student <laughs> I go attack another student over a girl how this girl feel you know how this local girl feel you know I get to understand that the girl in question is 14 years old her picture is circulating on um, on social media but guess what I won't share it because you know I don't have any um, proof to that but Persons are saying that this is this is the little girl in question and she her picture. How she feel? How the parents them feel right now? Come on, no. Jamaica, what we are do? What we are do? How the future look so? Listen, we now go run and come run. We know say a long time. Um fight over a woman a go on and all these things, but it never so blatant. It never so blatant, trust me, because man malice them friend and all these things, but to take it to this level, <laughs> I know me don't know about it. Anyway, leave your comment and your thoughts down below and keep this mother in our uh, prayers. You watching Jamaica YouTube TV. So we get it exactly how we tell it. No fabrication, you got it? So just like, share, subscribe. Don't forget to hit the notification bell and little bless outside saying, And well, well, well. Gotcha. Sadi man who wanna cross the road on the police man. Slap the woman in the seat there. Kill off the woman in the brother. Yo, man, we don't show no how to go on. The woman there at the sun. See how they at the sun, people? She that at the sun. Both of them now will come near, you see me? Mm-hmm. Chano. The man will make it home to our family. So I have a WhatsApp video, raw and an edit version of this Port Henderson accident. Now, it is understood that uh, police vehicle were traveling, you know, in the night and 
happened to hit the lady. The lady did not get a chance to be rushed to hospital because, trust me, the vehicle ran straight over her. The video is very graphic and I repeat, very graphic. I'm going to share that video in my WhatsApp group, but make sure you can manage. I'm going to put the link down in the comment section and you click it and join the group and ask for the video. All right. Now we don't have the official report as it not reached big media yet. And, uh, you know, something like this, if I even a local report should be on the official JCF page and I browse the JCF page a couple of times and I don't see anything as yet. So I was wondering what's going on. So if anybody have the full story, yeah, you can link me up on WhatsApp same way. So I'm going to provide it you know, with the video in my WhatsApp group, all right? So anyway, the bombshell job for Andrew Holness and the whole cabinet. Yeah, man, shake up the whole of the office because I don't know what happened. Why they my fight so hard to keep Paula Lowell in? in. <laughs> so the Andrew Holness led administration has breached Jamaica constitutional right. Yeah, man, so they might try to get her to extend her, her service, but it's ruling a court this morning. Say, so look here, DPP, you need to pack up and leave, and your wholeness can't save you. I don't know if it's a friends and family rate or go on in the Angelness administration, but I don't see why they are fighting so hard to keep this lady in power. She do her time, why she not just go on? So right away, we see the JLP said they are going to appeal the, the decision. You know, I mean, I don't know how these things work. Remember, I'm not a political person, but um, a, a constitutional right, you know, is, is constitutional. You see me? It is set and it cannot amend. It is the right of the people. Why, why are you guys trying to amend the right of the people? Anyway, comment down below and tell me what I think. I mean, we have so much things going on out here. Why just focus on this? You're going to make an appeal to reinstate the DPP and whatever, whatever. But in the first place to begin with, why you guys want to change all these things? What's going on? You know, now you guys are willing to waste taxpayer money to make an appeal to change the people constitutional right the rights of the constitution hmm? make it make sense so me not something and nobody not tell me nothing me not care who I'm um, bex I cost me me talk it like it is yeah why would I go so so above and beyond for this one person where 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 where, where, where this one person do so well no can just call it for what it is hey you have done your time and you know thanks for your service keep a big send off party and the list goes on and on and on eh? why why the fuss and the fight hmm. there was outcry when parliament amended the constitution which allowed for the retirement age for the holders of the offices of director of public prosecutions dpp and auditor general to increase in its ruling today the supreme court struck down section 22 of the constitution amendments which was passed last year by both houses of parliament this court has ruled that section 21 of the act is constitutional Section 2.1 of the Act has amended the Constitution as regards the retirement age of the Director of Public Prosecutions. Section 2.2 of the Act is not a valid section and is severed from the Constitution because the process remains unchanged for extending the retirement age. Section 2.2 is unconstitutional, null, void and of no legal effect. 
In bringing the case to the courts, opposition leader Mark Golding had asked the court to rule on the constitutionality of the amendments to sections 96-1 and 121-1 of the constitution. The opposition argued that the government hurriedly pushed the bill through parliament and maintained that it was not consulted on the matter. The amendments facilitated the change in retirement age for the DPP and Auditor General from 60 to 65 years. The bill, which was piloted by Justice Minister Delroy Chuck, was introduced Introduced on July 25 last year, then debated and passed in the House of Representatives on the same day. It was approved in the Senate three days later. The amendment meant Paula Lowellen could continue in office for at least another two years. It was a second extension for Miss Lowellen, who received a three-year extension in 2020 when she turned 60. Good morning again. Good morning. Um, could you, before we go into it, can you just state your name, type who you're representing, and then you can give us your reaction to this morning's ruling? Michael Hinton of Council for the Clearance. The, when we started our solution in this case, the first thing that we said is that the case is not about this case. It's not about what she did or did. It's not even really about the extension of the case. The case is about the rule of law about establishing a principle that the same laws apply to everybody and that the constitution needs to be respected and we think that's what the court's ruling has indicated to me. So um, we are appealing to the ruling, the result of the court effectively saying that the constitution requires you to see to it everybody in the same way and not make special principles. Does this mean now that the DPP will have to step away from office? As of today. As of today. And there's no further challenge that she can make? Well, I don't know what the um, government will be in response. Okay. Mr. Fowler, what's your reaction? Well, I'll start in pretty much the same way. We have always said that this was not about Mr. Levin. And it's more to do with our fundamental belief and respect for the Constitution. It is also an important statement on governance. A lot of these things can be avoided enough if there is respect for the opposition in power. And this matter could have been dealt with by a conversation with the Prime Minister and the leader of the opposition, and which is what the Constitution requires. And if that were done, and respect is given, then we wouldn't have this unfortunate situation of where a public servant is um, being embarrassed. So I regret that aspect of it, for, for sure. But I, I believe that um, the judgment was a good one. Yes, you mentioned that if, the, if there was a conversation, um, you know, there would be no embarrassment. But I'm not sure if this question is for you or for the opposition leader. Would the opposition be minded then to agree on a further extension? The way a country is run is by people recognizing the role and position of each other, the roles and position. And sometimes these matters are settled by the leaders. In a room, you submit the Bay Royal, um, Confab, and that is how a mature democracy operates. We shouldn't have to be in Parliament one day summer to pass a law um, without the requisite respect and um, consultation being done. And, and I think this is fundamentally a commentary on that. Mr. Powell, given this ruling, can we expect to see the, gover the opposition challenge bringing more matters like this in matters where they feel like they feel like the government did not, you know, break the pro some protocol or did not consult with them in a way that the constitution dictates? We are quite clear. Our role is to protect the integrity, the sovereignty of the constitution, and anywhere we see violations, we are going to press. Thank you. JY family, come on man, come on. You can't read so far and don't press the like button. Hit the bell icon to be notified. And this is the channel you need to subscribe to that you didn't know you need to subscribe to. Do the right thing man. Me love Jamaica.
and me now sell out Them try clip with wings, somehow we can't fly out But when we there, yard, yeah, nothing nice like Jamaica Roast bread, fruit and banana Under the tree with a glass of